for paper presentation is always pain mri findings in patient presenting with the neck pain introduction mri is widely acknowledged as an imaging modality of choice to demonstrate the decision and abnormality of the spinal column and intervertebral disc its superior soft tissue differentiation and ability to visualize and detect the lesions within the bone marrow and spinal cord and intervertebral disc which the advantage over the other investigations it is not an issue and get detailed information about the morphology and integrity of the intervertebral disc with the vertebrae intervertebral foramen as a joint ligaments on both t1 and t2 radial images then the neck pain and the cervical radicular pica are most common reason for the request of the mri of the cervical spine however as as overall the mri is high diagnostic accuracy in differentiating this various disease process the cervical spine is the degenerative process of the spine with the gradual onset with the alone or in combination with other factors resulting in narrowing of the central spinal and root canal some research i have documented that by the seventh decade it would be reached the prevalence of 95% in many subjects and manifests for the long period of the disability <clears throat> although degenerative changes noted are in much earlier in the life without mri it is a virtually impossible to detect the accurately in diagnose many causes of the neck pain as a disc prolapse nerve entrapment spinal cord compression the objective of this study are to evaluate the role of mri in diagnosis of the cause of neck pain aims and objective to evaluate the role of mri in diagnosing of the cause of neck pain and to document the pattern of the findings seen in the patients who presented with the neck pain and radiculopathy the material and method it is the prospective study conducted at the diagnostic unit of the radio radiology department of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj shivaji hospital the study was conducted in all patient referred by the various departments and all mri examinations was carried out on 115 tesla v pro g mri hd signal scanner imaging performed by using three sequences t1 t2 and the star sequences a protocol as per by uh, department all mri are uh, interpreted by three radiologists comprising of two younger and the uh, one senior professor and the cervical spinal disc was defined as a reduction in signal intensity of disc material on tituated images with or without a decrease in disc height then the results a total 30 mri examinations of the cervical spine were included in the study there were 19 males and 11 females males were most affected with spondylosis while the females are most affected with spondylosis plus disc prolapse as uh, shown in the figure 1 and the graph graph 1 the mri findings among the study group table 1 the mean age was the 45 plus minus 10 two patients had normal findings while the degenerative were found in 28 patient that is 93.33 patient as shown in the table 1 in table 2 showing the patient with degenerative findings cervical spondylosis alone seen in the 13 patient as 43.3% when it occurred in the combination with the disc prolapse in 11 that is the 36.66% which is the second most frequent finding the percentage of the abnormal finding per age group increases linearly with the age figure 2 showing the degenerative disc this is has been most frequently affected at the c45 level spondylosis plus disc prolapse in 79% and only spondylosis in 75% followed by c3 c4 level spondylosis and disc prolapse at 75% and spondylosis only spondylosis in 69% as shown by the figure 2 including the table table and the graph this is the titivator side image of the male patient showing multiple level anterior osteophytes shown by the yellow arrow and reduced disc height by red arrow these the t2 vector site limits showing disc protrusion causing stenosis of the spinal canal and narrowing of the lateral base and neural foramina and the, this is the figure 3 showing the tuberculosis was diagnosed in one patient in our study there is a t1 vector image showing the retropharyngeal abscess from by yellow arrow and area of cervical disc destruction by red arrow and this patient the discussion and for study of the we reviewed made no difference of the gender variations although some studies has shown the result in keeping with ours while some other showed no general variations all patient in the study were symptomatic the distribution occurred as a result of the degeneration of the inner nucleus pulposus associated degeneration of the outer nucleus fibrosis of the disc material due to osteophytosis the disc prolapse occurred as a result of already compromised ranulous fibrosis permitting the degenerative nucleus pulposus to migrate and this can be result this can be seen as a bulging of the disc material in mildest form to migration in the severe cases with all this process organic stamal dens and progressively there may be exacerbation of celebration of the symptoms of the neck pain and finding of the spinal cord and nerve compression our results showing the cervical spondylosis as the most frequent finding keeping with the finding of the other studies 
we found a linear increase in the percentage of the abnormal findings from 60% in least affected age group 15 to 24 years to the 100% in the 65 to 74 year of year range. Study carried out on the symptomatic as well as asymptomatic subject also observed the similar relationship. Then the cervical spine C3, C7 are considered to be the motion segment of the cervical spine with the mobility with the maximum C5 at the level of C5, C6, which is most frequently affected by the disc prolapse. We found disc prolapse occurring at the C4, 5 most frequently followed by C3, C4 level, same as been documented in other studies. The tuberculosis of the spine is perhaps the most important of all extrapulmonary form of TB. This is because early diagnosis and the treatment will spare many patients spinal deformity and debilitation. Tuberculosis spondylitis or most commonly affect the thoracolumbar spine followed by the thoracic spine, but rarely in the cervical spine. This study reports on one case of tuberculosis spondylitis in the cervical region presenting with the neck pain and radiculopathy and the retropharyngeal abscess. Its association with cervical spondylitis is less common and poorly understood. As well as the case in a patient seen in our study, it is advised that such cases should be thoroughly investigated to exclude other acute and more treatable cases. A total two patients had normal results despite having the complaint of the neck pain. A study carried out on, on 342 symptomatic patients by Iran showed to have the normal results. And also the other study to carried out in Japan to have the in cervical intervertebral disc was found the degenerative changes were common and increases linearly with the age from low as well as 12% to the third decade as, as high as 89%. Aside from the two stated uh, examples, there is a wealth of research which support the hypothesis that degenerative changes are probably the normal aging process. The few uh, and the MRI scanner may be responsible for the inability to detect the, some structural changes thus documented the, these cases as a normal. Conclusion, the magnetic resonance imaging is the most reliable method of evaluation of the spine and spinal cord and remain the gold standard. The degenerative changes are common in this locality and were shown by this study to increase linearly with the age and affect multiple intervertebral disc level. Our study also found a significant number of normal subjects manifesting with the neck pain. These are the references uh, used for the preparation of the paper presentation by Herring W and 2007 Blanche Pasak. Thank you.